Hello, everybody from the Nocturnal. I am Julian Cannon. Today, I have TJ McGibbon here. As we are going to talk about the War with Grandpa, the Umbrella Academy, and X Men. So, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Still alive, still staying safe, and this pandemic needs to end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how have you been holding up since this whole thing started? I've been good. Just at home, I've been safe with my family, and so I couldn't really ask for more. All righty. Now you play as <clears throat> sorry. You play as young Vanna on the Umbrella Academy, and she has a very interesting backstory. So, how did you and everyone else um, came up with the backstory for for that character, along with all your input for the character? Yeah. So um, the whole show is based off of these comics that were written by Gerard Way, yes. uh, and he's so so talented. The comics were really really well done, um, and it was brought to TV by Steve Blackman, who has also done an incredible job. And so when I came in, the backstory was sort of all set, but I was able to really work with Ellen Page and Steve um, to bring that to life. And so I had a whole bunch of fun doing that. I learned so so much. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, um, have, how much of the comics have you read before you got the role? So I have read all of the comics that were released. Um, there's been one or two released after we stopped uh, filming the first season, but I've read all of them up until then, um, and I love them. They're all still my. <laughs> Uh, it looks like you was very prepared <laughs> because a lot of a lot of times there are um, actors that do take on the comic book roles, but they um, either did not read the source material beforehand or read it until after they got their role. It seems like you was completely ready from it from the start. Yeah, I mean, when I got the audition, I was able to figure out that it was for the Umbrella Academy, uh, and I went out and got the comics um, just to be able to figure out how I needed to play this character uh, to really put my best foot forward. And so I fell in love with the comics and with Vanya, and so I just thought it was really important that I try my best to portray what Gerard Way had written, because um, it was so well done. What were your favorite memories when you were on the set? Oh, there are so Oh, man, we're so lucky to have such an incredible cast and crew. Um, I mean, the young cast and I were also really, really good friends, and we try to get together as much as possible. Um, I think one of the biggest friends from season two is that um, that snowstorm. Um, oh, yes. That was, <laughs> that was not fake. Um, they were actually planning on bringing in a rain truck, which means they just dump a bunch of water on us to make it look like it's raining. Um, but instead, it's Canada, and it was the beginning of November, which is kind of weird, but it snowed. Um, and so it was this giant snowstorm, and they had us in like seven pairs of pants and seven different shirts to try to keep us warm, and our tears were freezing on our face. Um, but it was so much fun, and I think it turned out really well. Oh my lord, I, I didn't expect that snow to be completely real. I literally thought it was um, not real snow, but now that I know that no, it's real No, it was snow. totally real, and the poor crew kept having to like shovel snow into bags to make every shot look the same and get the snow as far away from set as possible. Um, but it turned out great, and it was a lot of fun. Oh my lord, it must have been cold that day. I'm not really a snow person, I'm not a cold person at all. I'm more of a spring slash fall person. How about you? Me too. I don't like the cold very much, which is kind of strange because I live in Canada, so you kind of have to expect it, but I just kind of hibernate all winter. <laughs> <laughs> now, you were also in X-Men Apocalypse. That was one of the X-Men movies I've seen a few years back. Do you, what were your best memories when you were, when you were part of that film? Oh, X-Men was so much fun. I was really young, um, but I had such a fun time on the set, and everybody was so sweet. I think one of my favorite memories is just being able to sit with Michael Fassbender and he told me all about the industry and about his process and how he does things and how to evolve as an actor and get better and keep training um, and then at the end uh, I actually still have the necklace that I wore um, oh in really <laughs> yeah and so I still have it and Michael made sure that they gave it to me at the end of filming um, and it's just a memory that I've kept with me over the years I was going to ask if you have it right there, but I would not want you to get away from the Zoom call to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, when you were on X-Men, I believe that was when you learned about not only acting, but also how to play these specific characters the most. Uh, would you say that's correct? 
Yeah, I mean, I've been acting for a few years before that, but X-Men was definitely the biggest thing that I had done uh, and probably one of the hardest characters. I also had to learn to speak a whole new language because I did not speak Polish. Um, so it was a really big challenge, but I'm always up for a challenge and I love learning new things. <laughs> I'm so speaking about challenge, I was about to go back to the Umbrella Academy for a second. What was the most challenge, other than the snowstorm or the, <laughs> the real snow that was on set, what are some other challenges that you had to endure? Uh, uh, I think one of the biggest ones is that I am not a violin player. Um, <laughs> so they kind of had to throw me into some lessons to try to make sure that I was faking it as well as possible. Um, so it looked like I could maybe actually play the violin. Uh, and so I think that was probably the hardest part. Um, and I mean, there's another scene that's in season one that takes place in like the gray room with Ellen Page. And I think that one was really challenging because we were in that room together for like five hours just oh, filming. <laughs> and it was really, it was, it was really emotional scene. And so it took a lot out of us, but I think it turned out great. Uh, and I learned so much and had a lot of fun. Oof, I, you know, when you were playing the violin on a few of those episodes I've seen, I thought to myself, you are a natural. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. Now let's go with the War of Grandpa. Tell us about this project, because this is going to come out in a few more weeks. It has a completely star-studded cast, including Robert De Niro. Tell us about how you got involved with this, working with Robert De Niro, and being on the set for this. Yeah, so... Um... I filmed The War with Grandpa about three years ago, and the show is basically about this grandpa uh, who has to move in with his daughter because he gets into too much trouble on his own, and he moves into his grandson's room. His grandson is like a preteen boy who is not very <laughs> impressed. So in an attempt to win back his room, he tries to start a prank war to scare his grandfather out of his room. Not very smart, <laughs> uh, but I play the grandson's best friend, and so obviously I'm pulled into all their shenanigans. Um, and I had a lot of fun playing Emma. She's a really fun character. She's one of the only voices of reason in the show, um, and I think... I really enjoyed it. I got to go down and film in Atlanta for seven weeks, and so that was different, um, and it was a lot of fun. Oh my lord, when I've watched this, I'm gonna get ready to get some popcorn for it, because <laughs> I, I cannot wait to see it. Uh, what can fans expect when they, before this uh, premieres? Uh, yeah, I think fans can really just expect, it's just, it's a really good family show. I think it's great for all ages. Um, it was one of the first shows that I've ever worked on um, where the whole cast and crew would was ruining takes by breaking out in laughter like multiple <laughs> times, which is pretty unique because when we film, we have to do takes a million times over, um, which means by the end of it, the jokes kind of get old. But with this one, it was different and we would yell cut and the whole cast and crew would burst out laughing every single time. <laughs> and so I think just expect a lot of laughter and a lot of fun. Now, have you, what have you learned the most from Robert De Niro since both of you were on the, on the screen together? That's a good question. Um, Robert De Niro obviously is an industry legend, uh, but he's also really, really kind. And he treats everybody on set with kindness and respect. And so one of the things that I learned um, from him and that I really try to do on set is to treat everybody with kindness and respect um, because we are all such crucial parts of the filmmaking business um, and we all just want to get through our work day uh, <laughs> and create good relationships and yeah. <laughs> Did you try to uh, pull any pranks when you were on a set when you all had downtime? <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I think there were enough pranks on the set um, to get us through. <laughs> now, let me go to these Twitter questions because there's uh, quite a lot of them. I wanted to get a lot of them out the way for you. And since you said you haven't seen them beforehand, I'm going to read them out to you. This first one's All from, right. let's see, I'll go by the Twitter username, V7NYA. I'm sorry if I cannot pronounce that one, but that's just what it says. <laughs> hey TJ, it kind of ruined my I kind of ruined my bangs this weekend. Do you have any tips on how to style and manage bangs because yours are so pretty? Honestly, mine are really easy. I just straighten them. One of my suggestions would definitely be to try to find a good hairstylist. My hairstylists here in my city are wonderful and they do everything for me. Um, and if I tried to do it myself, I would also probably mess them up. Um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> 
Let's see. This one I might have to share my screen and show you because it has a picture attached to it. Let's see if I can share. Uh, yes, right over here. It says, I wondered since seeing on the Make an Umbrella Academy book, but was this part of the script ever filmed? Uh, this is right here. Yeah, it was. I think it was in episode three. Um, in that scene, I also, like, the kids are getting their tattoos, and it pans back to me on the stairs, and I end up drawing, um, trying to draw myself a tattoo, because I was never included in anything. Um, but that was a super fun scene to film. Let's see over here. From Inara Aguerlier 07. Do you speak a language other than English? What language you most like to learn? I wish I spoke a language other than English. I've taken a few uh, French classes for school, um, but I only speak English, but I would love to learn Spanish. My lady is Spanish and I have a hard time, <laughs> I have a hard time learning, even though sometimes she tries to teach me, so I could, I could see your view too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Gabriel, 48196569. Uh, this is le the legit way it's spelled. <laughs> Which series or movie would you like to act or be part of? Oh, I think... I would love, um, I really love superhero movies. They're a lot of fun, but I think my absolute dream role is I've been obsessed with Audrey Hepburn for a really long time. A lot of people tell me that I look like her. And so I would love, <laughs> and her story is so interesting and unique. And so I would really love to play her in like a documentary about her life or a movie about her life. Yeah. That's quite interesting. <laughs> uh, let's see here. From Crackhead5, what is your favorite band? That's a little hard to choose. I listen to a whole bunch of different uh, genres of music um, from like pop stuff to rap to like I'm a big musical theater kid um, and folk music and I absolutely love it. Uh, but one of my really big favorites would be the Arkells and they are based inside of my city, Hamilton, uh, and they're super wonderful and really nice guys. Are there any bands would you like to recommend since um, you seem to so like the local band scene? Oh, I think the Arkells are great. Um, who else? I'm drawing a little bit of a blank on other people. Um, but there are just a ton of really, really great artists in Hamilton. And I mean, across the world, so many people are so talented. Um, another girl from around where I am is Tara Lightfoot, and I love her music. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, chaotic. Let's see here. I cannot pronounce that last one, but it's spelled chaotic and the rest is T U A S T A N. Describe your relationship with each of the cast of the Young Umbrella Academy. There are a lot of them to describe them, like each on their own, but I think we're all really, really good friends and we've all kept in really good contact. Um, since we stopped filming and we try to get together as much as possible it can be a little hard because i mean cameron's in montreal so a different province and aiden is in la but the rest of us are here in the gta area uh, and so we try to get together as much as possible um but yeah we're just really good friends and i'm really happy and grateful for the relationships that TUA has given me you know i'm glad i brought that up because i also wanted to know what are some things you like to do in your own time Oh, I, I train a lot. So I dance and I take vocal lessons and I take acting classes. Um, but I really, really love to read. Um, and of course, watch movies and stuff to learn. But I think a really crucial part of being an actor and being a storyteller is reading good stories, because uh, it's taught me so much about acting and how to improve myself. What are some of your favorite movies? Because <laughs> uh, I have a long list for my own movies, but I'm sure you have a long list for yourself too. But if any favorite movie that comes on to the top of your head, what are some uh, three of your favorites? Oh, three of my favorites. One of them would definitely be Forrest Gump. I have loved that movie since I was really little. Um, what are some other movies that I love? Um, of course, I draw a blank on all my movies, uh, but I really, I watch all different kinds of movies. The only kind that I don't like to watch is horror. I'm not a big horror girl, <laughs> um, but I really just, I love to watch movies that have really good acting and good storytelling. Um, I think one that I really enjoyed, it was a really hard watch, but um, it's really educational, was 12 Years a Slave that actually Michael Fassbender is in, was in, and I got to sit down and talk with him about um, his role in that and how he was able to portray that because his character was extremely emotionally taxing. 
uh, and a really hard character to play, but he did it with such excellence. Um, and so I just got to talk to him about his process and how he was able to deal with that. Um, another one definitely for me would be Star Wars. Uh, me and my brothers have always been big Star Wars fans. <laughs> I've seen every single movie. Uh, and then probably Harry Potter. Oh, Star Wars is also one of my favorites too. If You know, I just thought of this question as soon as you said it. If you had to rank the Star Wars films, what would be the highest or and what would be the lowest? <sighs> That's hard. For many reasons. <laughs> but um, I think... I really love the whole storyline. Um, I think that they were all really, really well done. Um, the Empire Strikes Back was one that I used to watch all the time. Um, my brothers and I were also the kind of kids who would find one that we liked and then watch that movie every single day. Like every single day for two months straight and then move on to another movie in the franchise. Um, and so I don't think that I could choose a favorite. I have so many good memories um, that are attached to all of the movies. Um, another really good one that is technically a part of the Star Wars franchise, I think, but it's a little bit different is The Mandalorian that came on. Disney Plus. The Mandalorian is wonderful. I mean, how could you not love it? Baby Yoda is really cute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we have uh, season two coming up. Not Yoda. <laughs> yeah, they, I think it's coming out in October or something, and me and my family are super excited. You know, before I get back to these shorter questions, I would like to get to know more about you. Uh, what inspired you to go into acting? Oh, that's a good question. Um, my dad's whole side of the family, they're all artists, and we have map painters, and we have musicians and other actors, and so I think it runs in my blood a little bit, but pretty much ever since I could put together my own sentences, I was begging my parents to be on TV. And when I turned three, I started begging my mom to teach me how to read so that I could read scripts. Um, and so she taught me how to read. And when I was five, um, they finally let me start acting and my aunt got me hooked up with an agent and I've been going ever since. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you started acting? I mean, like, what was the first thing you acted on? The first project that I ever was on was a commercial for a jam company here and I remember the thing that I remember most was that they had somebody on set who had to make like every time they made the toast they had to make the toast look exactly the same oh lord <laughs> that's a, that's the hard exact, the exact amount as the last take uh and so that's what I remember most about it but it was a lot of fun <laughs> when your family sees you on the umbrella academy and also the upcoming War of Grandpa show, um, what, what kind of feedback do they give you? I'm not sure. I think, um, I think a lot of it is just my family is really, really supportive. Um, and they've always been really supportive of what I do. And so um, I don't know if it's necessarily feedback, more just love and encouragement, which I'm really grateful for. It's great that they su to support your uh, career and your journey to acting. Well, within the next 10 years or so, we're, well, not 10, but <laughs> within the next few, five, three, three to five years, where do you see yourself within those years? I think I want to do this as long as possible. Um, it's what makes my heart beat fast. It's what I love. And so I think over the next few years, I just see myself working as much as possible on really cool projects that are good stories, that are important stories that influence our culture. Um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a really good take on that. <laughs> Let me get back to the last few questions. Let's see here. From Ellie, hey TJ, I actually want to become an actress too, but I have no courage at all to pull it off since I have no confidence in my acting. Can you give me words of courage and advice? Um, I think that's, that's a really good question. Um, my biggest thing would be to try to train as much as possible. One of the biggest things that I've done to help my confidence um, would just be to train as much as possible. So I take dance classes, I take vocal classes, I've taken acting classes, uh, and just trained as much as possible. Because um, not only does it help your confidence, but I think it also will all come in handy one day. One thing that I think is really important to take is an improv class. Um, even in film and television, improv can really come in handy. Um, and then again, read good books, um, read good stories, watch good TV, and you'll learn a lot from that too. And from the same person, uh, do you watch anime? If so, what is your favorite anime at the moment? 
I don't watch a lot of anime. I really only have Netflix and Disney Plus, <laughs> uh, and so I haven't gotten into anime as much. Uh, I'm hoping to soon and find some places to watch it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I I love anime, but that's a discussion for another day. <laughs> now, my final question for you: Since the Umbrella Academy is also an academy, are there any students in school that recognize you from this show? And if they do, what do they normally say to you? Uh, so I've actually done my school online, like a self-paced program for almost two years now, um, just because it's easier to do with work. Uh, but I have gotten recognized in public a few times, and it's so much fun. I love to meet um, fans of the show, uh, and I enjoy it. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when conventions and comic cons come back and return for good, we're going to see a lot of fans right by the Umbrella Academy uh, section. And I mean a lot. I mean, I remember when I went to C2E2 earlier this year, the Umbrella Academy had a panel, and that panel was very full <laughs> when the entire cast was there. It was very full. And so I, <laughs> I don't know you miss um, meeting the fans, uh, do you? Oh, I do. Um, about last summer um, for Canada Day, we went – the almost the whole um cast except for Aiden um went to um another city in the GTA area uh, for Canada Day and we met a whole bunch of fans and it was so so much fun I can't wait to get back uh, to be able to do stuff like that and meet you all and see you all um but hopefully soon hopefully by the time this pandemic is over <laughs> or going through who knows but i'm happy to speak with you today uh tj mcgibbon plug your social media tell everybody where they can follow you see you post all your funny stuff on instagram and twitter where can they find you yeah so um i have instagram twitter and a facebook page and all of them um i think except for my twitter are under tj mcgibbon official uh and then my twitter is just tj mcgibbon Alrighty, any closing thoughts before we go? Um, I think just to be able to really find what makes your heart beat fast in life, I think it's so, so important. Um, and just find something that you love and enjoy and work as hard as possible to be able to maintain that. Alrighty, thank you so much for coming on. I'm happy to speak with you today and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and you're staying safe out there. Thank you.